Hello and welcome back to the Comic Hero Talk official podcast. This is episode number four. Please enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to Comic Hero Talk. This is the official podcast, episode number four, and I'm glad for you all to join me today. I'm your host Jacob Bartley and this is the YouTube channel where all I talk about is pretty much geeky stuff. It's mostly superheroes, a lot of Star Wars and some Power Rangers stuff, but I bunch all that together and call it superhero stuff because Jedi's are superheroes, Power Rangers are superheroes, they're all super powered beings saving the day. So that's kind of what this channel is all about. For this official podcast. Um, I call it official because I have two podcasts on here. One is the Comic Spoilers podcast and one is this official podcast where I talk about movie news, TV news, and comic books without spoilers. Now today, I'm going to get into a little tiny bit of, it's not a tiny spoiler, but it's a spoiler for a comic book later. It's Civil War 2 number 3. And you might have heard that something huge happens in that, so keep that in mind later. I can't really talk about it without talking about... I'm not going to tell you exactly what happened in it, but I'm going to tell you what happened without who it happened to or how. So keep that in mind for later on, and that's at the end of the podcast. But first, we talk about the movie news, and we got a bunch of stuff going on t this past week. I'm recording this on Monday, so a lot of stuff happened over the weekend with Star Wars Celebration... And a lot of stuff happened at the end of last week, and some things happened today. So I'm going to start with something that happened today because it's the most recent and the most relevant, and that is the newest and last Suicide Squad trailer. Now, for me, all the marketing for Suicide Squad has been amazing. There has not been one misstep, in my opinion. Unlike Batman v Superman, where they had that second trailer, I believe, which showed Wonder Woman, showed Doomsday, everyone recognized that. That was a mistake for them to show all that. As far as Suicide Squad goes, there has been no missteps in the marketing. Now, this new trailer, you might have seen it, it highlights Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis, and it kind of highlights Rick Flagg in a way. And it has a very comedic tone, just like all the other trailers. And I do like this trailer a lot. It's, it's interesting, it's really cool to see, but I don't think it was necessary. I don't think they need it. I think all the marketing places are... All the marketing tools are in the right places right now. This was just kind of a little cherry on top. And while I liked it, I kind of wish I didn't watch it because, you know, it gave away some of those jokes that might have hit in the movie that I'm already going to know now. Regardless of that, another good trailer from Suicide Squad. I am not worried about this movie at all. I have a buddy who tells me that he's worried about it. And I understand. I'm worried too because I want the DC Universe to succeed. And a lot of people say Batman, Batman v Superman was a failure. While it had its issues, I wouldn't necessarily consider it a failure. But I think Suicide Squad needs to be a massive hit, not just financially, but critically. More importantly, critically. It's going to make its money. It's going to make enough money to make profit, but it needs that critical reaction. And I just like this trailer. I, hope, I don't want to see any more TV spots, nothing. I haven't watched any of the TV spots. I stay away from them, but... This is it. Hopefully it really is the final trailer. The movie comes out in about three weeks or so. Maybe less than that. I'm super excited about it. Alright, moving on to another type of something that was supposed to be a trailer. And that is the Star Wars Rogue One sizzle reel that came out at Star Wars Celebration this past weekend. Now, for those of you who have been following this story, you might know that a lot of people are upset that we did not get an actual Rogue One trailer. Now, we did get a sizzle reel, a behind the scenes sizzle reel, which is awesome. If you've seen it, it's an awesome sizzle reel. But that's not where the disappointment comes from. The disappointment comes from us as fans expecting a trailer. Now, before I get into it, Disney never came out and officially said, you are getting a Rogue One trailer. And apparently, the people at Star Wars Celebration got us got a one minute trailer, but they not, they're not going to release that to the public yet. But as far as what the public saw who weren't at Star Wars Celebration, we all we got was that sizzle reel. And yes, as fans, we, we're kind of spoiled and we want everything and we want it now, but I 
think there's some validity to that. I think we we deserve it as fans in a way, but at the same time, the people at Celebration deserve to see something that we can't see because they paid the money to go, they traveled to go there, they did. But I do think there's something to be said about Disney and Lucasfilm allowing there to be this idea out there that we're going to get an actual trailer. They knew that the fans were expecting a real trailer. They knew it. And they even put it on the scheduled programming for an ABC special on the Force Awakens documentary. I think it was when... Uh, Friday night? And on the schedule it said New Rogue One trailer. It should have said New Rogue One behind the scenes sizzle reel. Now, all this commotion is going on because a lot of fans are upset. I understand it. I think people are over-exaggerating, but at the same time, they have a right to be upset as I was a little upset because I actually, don't tell my boss, but I was watching the panel while at work. The Rogue One panel, I went out of my way, brought up my laptop, was kind of like peeking at it while I was working, and I did that, risk getting caught so I can watch the Star Wars Rogue One trailer, and it was the sizzle reel. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the sizzle, I love the sizzle reel, it's amazing, there's the main thing it did was establish that this is a war movie. The tone is on point, and that was great. So I really like it. There's some really cool stuff in there. I think you should check it out if you haven't checked it out. And don't be too disappointed that we didn't get a Rogue One trailer. We'll get one soon. And yeah, so let's move on to just one other thing regarding Star Wars Rogue One, and that is we finally saw a image of Gal Galen Erso, who is Jin Erso's father played by Mads Mikkelsen. Now if you watch the Rogue One panel, it was officially confirmed that he is her father. Now we don't know what the context of that relationship is or how it's going to affect the movie, but we got this image. What can you say? It looks like Star Wars, feels like Star Wars. Mads Mikkelsen is a great actor, so not much to say there, but I do like the image. All right, moving on to our next movie related topic, and it's something that I definitely care about. I don't know if everyone else is going to care about, and it has to do with Saban's Power Rangers, the movie, which is coming out in March of 2017. If you've been following this channel at all, you know I love Power Rangers. And my review, my part one review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers season one will be up soon. I just finished watching episodes one through 30, and there's 60 episodes. That's why I'm splitting it up in two. That will be up now. And speaking of Power Rangers, check out this shirt I got. Um, I got it from the comic book store for free. Um, the guy at the comic book store, Cosmic Comics in Auburn, California, he knows that I love Power Rangers, and he came up on this shirt and he gave it to me. As you see, the green and white ranger mixed together, you know, Tommy Oliver, both rangers. Really cool. Shout out to Cosmic Comics and John out there for hooking me up with that shirt. I was so happy to get that pleasant surprise, and he probably earned my loyalty for life uh, as far as buying comics at his store. But anyways, there was a few things that came out about from Power Rangers last week, and that is the character posters and the image of Rita and Trini. So let's start with the character posters. Now, I talked about this on the Apocalypse Movies Movie News podcast, and I did not love the character posters. Now, you might some of you might have noticed it on my YouTube channel art, I have the Red Ranger poster as one of the pictures. But that's just to represent me as a Power Rangers fan and what I love as far as, you know, the the material that I love and what I like to talk about. Now, I don't hate these character posters either. I just, I don't think they're anything special. They're kind of weird and awkward. It's just their face with the Power Rangers lightning bolt logo, kind of like that. And it's like lit on the logo and dark and it kind of has their color in the background. It just, they're not great posters. Like, I'm not going to hang those in my room. I will hang the Together We Are More poster, the one with the logo and the stars. That poster's awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on a big size version of that. But as far as these character posters go, don't love them, but they're cool, you know. It's just, it gets the word out there that this movie's still coming and who these characters are and who's playing who. So don't mind them, but don't love them. What I do really like, though, is the image of Elizabeth Banks as Rita Repulsa choking or pinning up the character Trini, the Yellow Ranger, up against the wall. And if you see, if you look at the picture, the wall's cracked behind her. So some type of Rita goes to her house or something and 
has an altercation with her and smashes her up against the wall, probably threatening her. I'm wondering what the context of that scene is because I'm trying to think of it in my head. Why would Rita just go to her house and attack her alone? Maybe to weaken her? It might be a dream sequence of Trini just uh, thinking about Rita and, you know, having some foreshadowing of what's to come. So, yeah, don't love the character posters. Really like the image of Rita and Trini. I cannot wait for this movie. We'll see when it comes out if it can actually, you know, change the perception of Power Rangers from something cheesy to something pretty cool. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the mythology is awesome. You can make a great movie with this mythology. You just got to do it right. All right, moving on to a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy now. Last week, a whole bunch of images started coming out for different movies. You got like Kong School Island images and Wonder Woman images. Uh, but there was a really cool concept art photo of Guardians of the Galaxy. And the reason it's significant is I usually don't get excited over concept art. And it just depends. Like if it's years before the movie of art, if it's months or a year out and we've never seen anything from the movie and they release some concept art, cool. But if it's a Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and if it was just the same team and I've already seen the first movie so I know what they look like, it wouldn't excite me, but the reason this one is significant is because it has three new characters as far as being on the Guardians team. Now, this picture doesn't necessarily imply that this is the new Guardians team, but that's what I got from it. So you have the original five with baby Groot instead of Groot, and then you have Nebula, who is Gamora's sister, which if you saw the movie, you know where that character was at the end of that movie, and... Well, you, you don't know where she was exactly. You, you She just dipped. And then you got Yandu. And you also have the new character who wasn't in the first movie, Mantis. So I'm assuming this is going to be the new Guardians team. There's going to be higher stakes, a bigger mission. And these three characters are going to join on the team. And maybe halfway through the movie, they're all going on this mission together. And I got to say, I love it. If that's the case. If these three characters are joining the actual Guardians of the Galaxy team, I love it because first of all, you have Yondu, the dynamic between him and Star-Lord. And it's going to be interesting because they didn't leave on necessarily the best best of note. They didn't they weren't in good standing when they separated, especially with Star-Lord tricking Yondu not giving him the Infinity Stone. And then also you have Nebula and Gamora who have a similar situation where they don't get along. They're not in the best they're they're not in the best state as far as their relationship goes, so you're gonna have that. And then who knows with Mantis? That's just really cool. Also, now you have three women on the team. As a, I know there's five males, but there's five, three women, which is a pretty cool mixture of gender. So I I'm if this is the team, or just if these characters have significant roles in the movie, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Guardians of the Galaxy two. Next year, what a damn year it's going to be. Speaking of 2017, there were some Wonder Woman images released last week as well. Man, I'm going to lose my mind in 2017. We have just, we have, all right, I have Power Rangers, Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Thor Ragnarok, which is going to have Hulk in it, uh, Wonder Woman, Justice League, Star Wars Episode 8. Beauty and the Beast. I can go on and on and on. I such a great time to be a movie fan right now. But Wonder Woman is one of those movies that I'm really looking forward to. It's got to be in my top five most anticipated, if not six or seven. But it's really high up there. And I think Gal Gadot is going to be a really good Wonder Woman, especially working with Patty Jenkins. I said that on my last podcast. And I love these images. Now, images aren't necessarily a good thing to get excited about, but... We haven't seen, even seen a trailer for this movie yet, so images are all we got, and she looks great. Not just as far as being super freaking attractive, which obviously she is, she just looks iconic. She looks like Wonder Woman. She looks amazing. So, I love these images. I love the image with her and Chris Pine. I kind of has this lighting or like look to it that just looks great, it looks beautiful. And I think the movie's going to have that same look. And I'm actually reading the Wonder Woman Rebirth comics right now. 
like it knows. So, yeah, Wonder Woman's going to kill. All right, that's going to wrap up the movie news segment of the Comic Hero Talk podcast. Now let's move on to the TV segment of the Comic Hero Talk podcast. Now, there's so many little news bits that come out throughout a week regarding comic book TV shows. But for me, I'm only going to talk about real stories or trailers or images that are significant. I'm not going to talk about so-and-so was cast in a lower, lower side role. Like, that's irrelevant. But like a, a lead casting or... A trailer or something is is relevant as far as I'm concerned, or something significant. Now I got three topics today. I mean, technically two, and I can't not talk about the great thing that came out of Star Wars Celebration. Even though the non Rogue One trailer was a disappointment, we did get something amazing, and that is the Star Wars Rebels season three trailer. Holy crap! All right. There's something significant revealed in that trailer. Go watch it right now. If you haven't watched it, pause this, go watch it. Because I'm going to spoil everything in it. Alright, you've been warned. Now, there's a big thing. We saw fuck Thrawn. Excuse me for cursing. But we saw Thrawn. And aside from that, put Thrawn aside for a second. It's just a great trailer. It, Rebels has surprised me so much. When I heard about it, I was like, oh, an animated Star Wars show. It's going to be for kids. It's not for kids. It's kid friendly, but this is a uh, Star Wars. This is like creativity on the level of the movies, and it's great. There's some magical episodes throughout those two seasons. Magical, like on par with the movies. I love this show, and this continues the greatness of it. It looks amazing. Just everything. Ezra being older, his haircut, Kanan being blind, which I'm not a fan of. I was upset when he got blinded. In end of season two now that doesn't mean it can't work out but i'm i don't know i feel like there's a trend maybe daredevil has inspired it there's a trend of people being blind like aria on game of thrones i thought she was going to be blind for from for the whole time so glad she wasn't sorry for the spoiler but yeah i don't know i don't want kanan to be blind but whatever they're doing it that's my only problem with the series going forward um we hear Ahsoka's name in there. I hope she's back. I've grown very fond, grown very fond of Ahsoka, just in general as a character. And you see Darth Maul, freaking Darth Maul, still around. How important has Darth Maul become to the Star Wars universe? If you consider him from Phantom Menace all the way to Star Wars Rebels. You know how much time that is? Crazy. But overall, love the trailer. Now... Grand Admiral Thrawn. I don't know much about him. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend like I do. But I know that hardcore Star Wars fans have read his his non-canon novels. And he's one of the most beloved characters in the expanded universe. That's what I know. And he sounds like a freaking badass. And this is going to be my first opportunity to get to know Thrawn. And they the way they executed it in introducing him, they said... One of the characters is like, uh, before their attacks were sloppy, but everything's coordinated and he's he's winning. There's no way we can win. I think Thrawn is going to be one hell of an adversary for the Rebels. And just when it's all said and done, if they knock this out of the park, he can be one of the best villains in the whole Star Wars universe, period. So I think he has that type of potential. Love this Star Wars Rebels season three trailer can't wait for the season to start now also they released a darth maul clip it's about a minute long and darth maul is holding some of the rebels hostage and kanan and ezra show up to rescue them and darth maul is just a crazy mofo he keeps calling ezra his apprentice he he ha he has the rest of the crew hostage he tries to kill kanan Man, I am so happy that Darth Maul is relevant again in there, and he's going to have a significant role. I have a theory. Now, this is a little off track, but I'm, I'll keep it short. And I'll go into detail. Check out Apocalypse Movies, the YouTube channel, Apocalypse with an X at the end. We have a Padawan podcast, and we do something called Address the Academy. 
address the academy and it's where one of us can bring up a, a proposal or a certain issue or a topic in the Star Wars universe that we've been thinking about and want to talk about. I'll go into way more detail on this theory on the Padawan podcast when it's my turn for Address the Academy again. But for now, I just want to say, I think there's a possibility that Darth Maul became Snoke. Now, yeah, stupid, far, far-fetched theory, right? But we've seen characters, in particular Darth Maul, get really damaged and then transformed and into a different looking type of creature. Where does he in Clone Wars? He has that spider body. He's all sh- sh- shrinked up and skinny. He looks nothing like he did in The Phantom Menace. And then he kind of comes back when Mother Talzin helps him out. But I just, I think it's a possibility. What if he gets really damaged? Like his skin just gets dissolved and like his horns get dissolved and he's like, He's so messed up, and you know how messed up Snoke is. And then, because we don't know how big Snoke really is. We just saw the hologram. And it would make complete sense. Because Snoke has, if, if Mole is Snoke, and we know the Sith have found ways to cheat death. So there's no problem with him staying alive that whole time. If he can cheat death. And it would kind of make sense why he's so messed up, and why he looks so different. And how crazy would that be if we had this character who was in the very first story ever told in episode one all the way to the current Force Awakens and he's seen everything in what is what does Darth Maul always want to do? He wants to rule the galaxy. He wants to take over and what is Snoke doing? I'm just saying, keep it in mind. And along with that theory. Benicio Del Toro is playing a character in Star Wars Episode Eight. We have no idea who he is. Speculation is that he's some type of Sith. He works for Snoke. I think he's Ezra. I think Darth Maul is Snoke and Benicio Del Toro is playing an old Ezra. I don't know exactly how the ages would match up, but I think it could work. Sorry for going off on that tangent. I just It's something that I've been really wanting to talk about. And, yeah, I did really like that Darth Maul clip, if you didn't notice. It's awesome. All right, moving on to one smaller uh, TV-related topic, and that has to do with uh, X-Men and Fox. So, apparently, uh, X-Men, they're going to have a show called Legion on Fox. Um, There's been some castings announced and stuff. I don't know much about the show, but they also had a show called Hellfire planned. Now, supposedly, Hellfire has been canceled, and... They're working on a new show with, I think, Brian Singer's producing it, and it's just called an X-Men show right now. So I'm wondering if it's going to be more mainstream X-Men, if it's going to tie into the movie universe, kind of like how the Marvel movies do it. And Marvel Television is producing the show, so that's interesting. And for me, it makes me think a second, because if I'm not mistaken, a while back it came out that Fox was not allowed to make a X-Men TV show. They did not have the rights to make an X-Men TV show. But they had the obviously they have the movie rights. So Marvel and Fox had struck some type of deal, made some type of business deal to make that possible. So it, for me it opens the door for a potential crossover within the movies down the line. So I think that's a good sign. All right, that's going to wrap up the TV segment of the podcast. Didn't have much to talk about today and let's end it like we do every Comic Hero Talk official podcast, and that is talking about comics. Yes, the core and soul of this whole thing, comics. Um, yeah, I, I've i been starting to read less comics because when this whole DC Rebirth started and the Civil War II line, I was reading everything. I was eating it all up. But I'm not rich, and I don't have to all the time in the world. If, I, if this is all I did, if all I did was podcast about movies and TV and comics, and I, I could make a living, if I made a living off of it, I would read ev- as much as I possibly could. I'd probably read every Rebirth comic and then a lot of Marvel comics if I could, but don't. So I gotta pick and choose. So that being said, this week I'm gonna talk about Wonder Woman number two, Amazing Spider Man number two, Civil War two, and then 
Civil War Two issue number three. Now I gotta talk about start with Civil War Two issue number three, and that is this comic right here. Now you see that character on the front. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, kind of just probably ruined it. But um, so potential spoilers here. So if you don't, if you haven't read Civil War Two number three, stop listening to this right now. All right, you've been warned. So, in the synopsis for the comic book, this is what it says. So, I'm not really spoiling it. It's in the synopsis. It says, a major death in the Marvel U Comics universe causes a lot of drama, basically. That's what it says. Now, I'm not going to say who or how they died, but I think I'm going to put out a separate video just talking about this comic. So, look out for that. But, man, when they said... It's going to shake up the universe. They were not lying. First of all, setting that aside, this comic is beautiful. The whole Civil War II, the first three issues have been beautiful. Beautifully written, beautifully drawn, beautifully told. It's great, and I cannot be more happier with it. And it's really dramatic and dark, and you feel the stakes. So, I love it. If you're not reading Civil War II number 3... Please read it. And continuing on that Civil War II uh, trend, Amazing Spider-Man Civil War II. Now, Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. If you haven't noticed with all the designs and stuff for the um, the YouTube channel, there's a lot of Spider-Man themes and stuff. Yeah, he's my favorite superhero. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to read the storyline with him in Civil War II. But I didn't love this comic. I don't love what's going on. I like elements of it. Like, I like that he's kind of his uh, uh, his own young Tony Stark. Not in the sense that he's a playboy or anything. In the sense that he has his own Parker Industries and he's a technological genius. And But he lives a very different lifestyle than Tony Stark. But I love that element of it. And I love just seeing Spider-Man, Peter Parker's personality. But there's this other storyline going on with the villain, the potential villain character. And I, I'm not... I don't hate it. I like it. I'm just like not dying to keep reading, but I'm going to because it's Spider-Man. So, if you like Spider-Man, pick it up, but it's not a must read for me. All right, and then uh we got Wonder Woman Rebirth number 2 also. Man, I I'm digging this comic. I I think Wonder Woman's great and I really like it. It's kind of the story's being told really weird. So, this is not really a spoiler, but one issue is like following one storyline, and then the next issue is telling an origin, and then it goes back to what she's doing now, and then origin. So every, each tw every other week, not not every other week, but every other two weeks, we get one of these stories continued, and I kind of like that. Yeah, so check out Wonder Woman issue number two of the Rebirth line. I think it's a really good read and I'm digging it. So talking about an issue that came out last week and this is Superman number two. I'm really liking the Superman Rebirth. I don't love it, but I like it because um, it has to do with deal with him and his son and how his son is half human and half Kryptonian and what that means in this world and how this new Superman, well, technically old Superman, but is taking over the new 52 Superman's role in the Justice League and in the world after his death. And I, that whole dynamic between him joining the Justice League and then him and his son is got me really interested and keeps me reading it. So yeah, check out Superman number two if you're interested in it. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Comic Hero Talk. Thank you all for listening. Sorry about my dogs barking. They're crazy. I am Jacob Bartley. You can find me on Twitter at Jacob Bartley underscore. You can find me on the Apocaflix Movies YouTube channel. You can find me on this Comic Hero Talk YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Hit that like button. I'm trying to build this thing up. I really do appreciate it. And hit me in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of this podcast and any of the topics that I talked about this week. Thanks again. Till next time, take care.